What do you call a Chinese food truck in the park? A walk in the park. I was cooking Chinese food down in Yosemite. It was also a walk in the park. What's the heaviest Chinese food? Once again, it's a wonton. It's a wonton. How do you make the best American Chinese food? Like so, what do Chinese food and calculations and entropy have in common? They both feature some dim sums. They both feature some dim sums. And I just had some mediocre Chinese food. It was only so-so. It was only so-so. That's all the Chinese food jokes I have, but we still have people filtering into the game. We have 161. We have 100. Can we get 162? We got 163. Let me tell you, as you're signing in, usually here on You Call That News, all you get is a social media shout out on the Jewish Telegraphic Agency. Well, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I am excited to announce to you that you get a, not only a social media shout out, you also get a $50 gift certificate to your favorite Judaica shop, your favorite Judaica shop. Now it can't be your second favorite shop. It can't be the shop that's closest to you. It can't be your third favorite, it can't be your top 10. It has to be your favorite Judaica shop. If you are our lucky winner, not our lucky winner, if you have the skill, if you have the fortitude to answer these 18 questions and come out on top, you just email Julie at myjewishlearning.com. She's gonna get you your $50 gift certificate somehow. I don't know exactly how. That's above my pay grade. We're at 171. We're at 171. 171. 169. We're losing people. 170. 170. Back 170. Can we get 171? Can we get it to 180? Can we get it to the good Jewish number of 180? 180. 180. Can we get 180? We're on 172. We're on 172. Can we get 173? Can we get 173? Safta's in there for 173. Way to go, Safta. 174. The Zaidster. Safta and the Zaidster. Are they married? We'll never know. Judy M, 176. 176. Steinico, 176. Come on. Come on. Let's get to 180. 174. We're going down. We're going down. I got to start the game. Lest we lose too many people, we're starting right now. The 18 questions coming right at you. Way to go. Oh, 174. 180. We're starting 183. A very Jewish Christmas Eve at MJL 3. 2, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, 1, 1. Question. Numero uno. Coming at you right now. According to Alexander Portnoy, why do Jews like Chinese restaurants so much? Is it because the pork has so much sauce that it's kosher? Is it because Chinese waiters think Jews are just some big nosed version of wasp? Is it that they are open even on Christmas Eve? Is that there is, quote, a natural affinity between the Chinese and the Jews. All of these might be true, except for one of them. Only one of them, though, was said by Alexander Portnoy. Mazaltov, Mazaltov, oh, it was a savage question. It was a savage question. Mazaltov to these seven of you who knew that, according to Philip Roth, the reason Jews like Chinese restaurants is because, according to the Chinese, we're just some big nosed wasps. Moving along, let's look at the leaderboard. Who's on top? Benet's on the top. Joel's on the bottom. Joel's next. Schlemiel, JTA, and Uncle Marty. Let me tell you, all all of these names I recognize from my You Call That News days. We got some ringers. Is JB in the house? That's what I want to know. Going along, question number two, coming right at you right now. There are two possible answers to this one. Nittelnacht, the Yiddish term for Christmas Eve, has been observed in some form since 1600. What does that mean? What does that mean? It's a multi-select. Is it the night of the birth? the night of the hanging, the night of the heresy, or the night of the violence. What does Nittelnacht mean? Is it the night of the birth, the night of the hanging, the night of the heresy, or the night of the violence? And there's some fuzzy etymology here. So there's two possible answers. Which ones are they? Which ones are they? Let's take a look. Mazalto, to those of you who got the night of the birth from Natalus, the, the Latin, also could be the night of the hanging, Natal, Nitel perhaps referring to the cross, moving right along. Let's look at the little board. Schlemiel in first, Benet in second, JTA in third. JTA better be in third. If you're working for JTA, you better be winning this quiz. Jan is number five, Uncle Marty. All people I have seen play, you call that news before, on the leaderboard. Question number three, coming right at you. According to the tradition of early modern European Jews, which is not forbidden on Nittelnacht, staying with Nittelnacht, is it having sex, eating meat, 
learning Torah, or leaving home, which is not forbidden, which is not forbidden according to Eastern European Jewish tradition, on Nitzelnach, which you know, having sex, eating meat, learning Torah, or leaving home, which is not forbidden, forbidden, who knows it, who knows it, Mazel Tov. These are savage questions, folks. We don't have one question where the majority of people are getting it right. Eating meat is not traditionally forbidden on Christmas Eve. That's why people get lots of kosher Chinese chicken, but all those other things are traditionally forbidden. Let's look at the leaderboard. Is there any movement? Shlemiel, still in first, but in second. Bergberg, Bergberg, shooting up to third. It's me, it's me. Who's me? Is it JB? Is it JB? We'll never know. JT, JTA, still in fifth, and up 40 places. Bornstein, Bornstein, you are the highest climber. Way to go, Bornstein. You're still not on the leaderboard. Let's see if you can make a run at that $50 gift certificate to your favorite, your favorite Judaica shop. Not your second favorite, not your third, your favorite. Question number four coming at you right now. In what small community did Jessica Mayer, the Jewish astronaut who began the pandemic in space, grow up? Was it Newburyport, Massachusetts? Caribou, Maine, Wimberley, Texas, Point Roberts, Washington. All of these places are very small communities. I believe they all have some Jews there somewhere, but which one was this astronaut from? Mazaltov, Mazaltov to the 35 of you who knew that she started the pandemic in space and she came home to Caribou, Maine. I don't know if she came home to Caribou, Maine, but she's from Caribou, Maine. Let's look at the leaderboard. Whoa, movement. Uncle Marty rocketing up the first. Jan in second, Sharna in third. BJ in fourth, and JB Sparky, if that is the real JB. JB, welcome to the game. Let's see if you've got it what it takes. Question number five, which of these is not a side gig of Ben Zausmer, a sabermetrician for the World Series winning LA Dodgers? modeling the spread of COVID through the LA Jewish community, replicating elements of the Jewish camp experience online, creating a virtual Hanukkah dreidel game for a socially distanced Hanukkah, using data analytics to predict Oscar winners. He's the lead sabermetrician for the LA Dodgers. He did three of these things, but not a fourth. Mazal tov to the 27 of you who knew that he did not model the spread of COVID through the LA Jewish community. He did all of those things during the pandemic. Let's go to the leaderboard. Uncle Marty, BJ, BJ's on fire. Beej has answered a streak four in a row. Uncle Marty in second, JT in third, Jan in fourth, and Sharna. Sharna's down in fifth. Way to go, guys. I don't see anyone else shooting up. So come on, folks. Let's get some leader. Let's get some movement up top. Question number six. According to the Kabbalists, the Jewish mystics, why is sex forbidden on Christmas Eve? Is it because the spherot are misaligned on Christmas Eve? Is it because ritual impurity is likely to occur on Christmas Eve? Is it because demons are particularly active on Christmas Eve? Or is it because apostates are conceived on Christmas Eve? All of these are very plausible Kabbalistic ideas. I'm getting a PhD in Kabbalah. I should know. Only one of them is correct. <coughs> That's that is Mazal Tov. The apostates are traditional people who are going to convert away from Judaism, God forbid, are conceived on Christmas Eve. By the way, if you're celebrating Christmas tonight, I don't know. Are there people who choose to spend their Christmas Eve playing a Jewish game show on My Jewish Learning? If so, you might be in the wrong religion. We'd be glad to have you. Let's look at the leaderboard. <clears throat> BJ in first, Shlemiel in second, Abitz in third, Booby, Booby's in fourth. I don't know who's Booby. Someone's Booby's in fourth. Uncle Marty's in fifth. Let's go. Question numero seven coming at you. Everyone knows White Christmas was written by Yisrael Bellin. Otherwise, no, they're in Berlin. Three of these were also written by Jews. The fourth was not. Which of these was not written? by Jews. Which of these was not written by Jews? Our video's not working, so I'll sing it for you. This is improvised, folks. This one taking so much time. Which one was it? 
Casalto, the first question the majority of you got right. Silent Night is a 19th century Austrian tune, not written by a Jew. All of those others, holy jolly Christmas, and Rudolph the Red Nosed Rain, and is the most wonderful to all of those were written by Jews. Let's look at the leaderboard. Not much movement, not much movement, though Dukes, welcome, and 47 places, up 47 places, Ella, way to go. Let's see if you can make it onto the leaderboard by the end. Question numero eight, this is a short answer. What is the name of the fictional retirement community where Jerry Seinfeld's parents live? What is it? Type it, as always on You Call That News, this is in second grade. Spelling counts. There is only one correct way to spell the name of the retirement community where Jerry's parents live. What is it? It's a Festivus miracle. It'll be a Festivus miracle if more than half of you get this. But come on, folks, what is it? What is it? My grandmother lived, a blessed memory lived in Colony Point, but that's not where they live. Where do they live? In, in, in Mazaltov. It's a miracle. It is none other than, don't know, Boca Vista. No, Boca Vista is not right. It is Del Boca Vista, Del Boca Vista, Mazaltov to the nine of you who knew that they live in Del Boca Vista. Let's look at the Schlemiel knew it. Beach, JTA, Uncle Marty, and Dukes did not. I wonder who the other nine are. We'll never know. Sticking with Seinfeld. Morty Seinfeld derides it as the Pinko Kami Rag. But what is the name of the Del Boca Vista newsletter? Is it the Golf Cart Express? Is it the Boca Burger? Is it the Vista View? Or is it the Boca Breeze? Some of you will remember that a breaking story in this paper about Kramer being barefoot in the clubhouse submarines his condo board president campaign. But what's the name of the newspaper? What is it? What is it? Mazal Tov to the 75 of you Seinfeld fans who knew that it was the Boca Breeze. The Vista view I thought was plausible. The Boca Burger. Come on, folks. I don't know who you eight are. Come on. The Boca Burger? No way. JTA in first. Way to go, JTA. Shlemiel, Sharna, BJ, and Applebaum. Applebaum, I like your name. Real or fake, Applebaum is a great name. Let's go. Question number 10, another short answer. On which Roman festival are both Hanukkah and Christmas observances likely based? What is the Roman festival? Once again, this is not second grade. This is you call that news. Spelling counts. Spelling counts. Okay, what's the name of the Roman festival? I don't know if they're celebrating it in that uh, lovely Roman relief or not. So don't look for any clues there. What's the name of the festival on which Hanukkah and Christmas observances are likely based? Are likely based. Which one is it? Four, four, three, three, two, 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 one, one. It is Mazal Tov 2. Not Festivus, not Plato's party, it's Saturnalia. 22 of you knew that. I think that's pretty good. Way to go, 22 of you. Anyone on the leaderboard? Yes, Schlemiel, J JTA, Dukes, Will. Will shooting up. I don't know if that's my brother-in-law, Will, but if it is, way to go, Will. If it's not, way to go, Will. Looking at the next question, question 11, coming at you. What show features the immortal line? A Macca baby's got to do what a Macca baby's got to do. Once again, it's short answer. Once again, spelling counts. Some of you children of the 90s might have gotten a clue from that whistling, that brilliant whistling of the theme song to the Rugrats, to the Rugrats. Somebody got it. Let's see how many people got it. 35 of you got it. Way to go. A Macca baby's got to do. That is the Rugrats Hanukkah special released in 1996. Let's look at the leaderboard. Alex is on fire. Alex on fire with an answer streak of three in a row. Shlemiel still leading away, building a lead. Will in second. Alex in third. JTA falling a bit to fourth. And Dukes. Dukes still hanging on to the number five spot. <coughs> Question 12. Coming at you right now. What is the first ancient tome? that records the story of the oil on Hanukkah burning for eight days. What is the first tome that records the story? The second book of Maccabees, the Babylonian Talmud, the Mishnah, or the Zohar? Which one is it? Which is the first tome that records the legend of Hanukkah that we all know? Not what is an ancient tome. What is the first ancient tome? Who knows it? Who knows it? Who knows it? Mazal tov to 52 Talmidei HaChamim who know 
that it was in the Babylonian Talmud that appears. The book of Maccabees says nothing about lamp lighting. Let's look at the leaderboard. <clears throat> Shamil in first, JT in second, Will in third, Dukes in fourth, and JB Sparky. JB, welcome back to the leaderboard, JB. You've got a ways to go. Question 13, <clears throat> what is the best Jewish holiday? This is a poll, you don't get points for it. Sukkot, Hanukkah, Purim, or Passover. It's a little market research. Now some of you are like, but I like Yom Kippur. Well, you don't get that choice, ladies and gentlemen. You gotta choose one of these. I like Tubab, sorry. I like Shavuot. No one's favorite holiday is Shavuot. Come on, it's gotta be one of these. Sukkot, Hanukkah, Purim, or Passover. Um, okay, so Passover, that would be my answer too. I don't have anything else to say about that quiz. Question number 14, North African Jews have a special celebration on the seventh night of Hanukkah. What is it for? Is it for the moon, <clears throat> sons, Israel, or daughters? On the seventh night of Hanukkah, North African Jews celebrate a special, special celebration. What's it in honor of? The moon, sons, Israel, daughters. The Talmud says Israel's like the moon. We're always talking about our sons. We're always talking about Israel. We're already talking about our daughters. Which one is it? Which one is it? Mazalto. To the 50 of you, who knew? Maybe by reading that article on JTA or Alma, that is a celebration called Eid Habanot, which is about daughters. <clears throat> Let's look at the leaderboard. Shlemiel still in first, JT in second. Wilfred, Handy. Welcome to the leaderboard, Handy. I think I know who Handy is. JB, JB in fifth. Question number 15, coming at you right now. What is not a traditional nittel nacht observance among Hasidic Jews? Watching cartoons, tearing toilet paper for Shabbat, playing chess, or fixing leaky faucets, which is not a traditional Christmas Eve uh, activity in the Hasidic community. Watching cartoons, tearing toilet paper for Shabbat, playing chess, or fixing leaky faucets, as per JTA, Mazal Tov to the 72 of you who either who know the Hasidic community well and know that watching cartoons is not one of those traditional activities on Mittelmacht. The other three, the other three are, let's look at the leaderboard, Shlemiel, still in first, JTA, Will, Handy, and Beej. Beej is making a comeback with three in a row. Way to go, Beej. There's only four questions left, ladies and gentlemen. Can anyone make a move on Shlemiel? Can Handy continue the climb? Can JB make an astounding comeback? I can't wait to find out. Let's find out right now. What celebrity went viral when he said, I have no idea what Chinooka is, but happy Chinooka because they said so. Was it Chubby Checker, Smokey Robinson, Kit Harrington, or Cheech Martin? Who said happy Chinooka because they said so? He seemed to really mean it, but he had no idea what Chinooka was. Who is it? Chubby Checker, Smokey Robinson, Kit Harrington, or Cheech Martin? Apparently, Smokey Robinson doesn't know what Chinooka is. I have to admit, I don't know who Smokey Robinson is. That makes us equal. Let's look at the leaderboard. Shlemino on first, Will on fire. Three in a row, back in the game, Will. Handy, Handy is in third, JTA in fourth. And Dukes, Dukes is in fifth. Let's go, question numero 17. The Jews have Hanukkah. The Zoroastrians have Sada. Frank Costanza has Festivus. What is the Hindu festival of lights? This is a short answer. As always, as always throughout the night, spelling counts. There's only one, as far as I know, accepted way of trans spelling this word in English. What is it? What is the, <clears throat> the Hindu festival of lights? There's a beautiful display of it there. The Zoroastrians have Sada. We have Hanukkah. The uh, the uh, Christians have 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 Christmas, Christmas, right? Yes, Christmas. The Romans had Saturnalia. The Hindus have Diwali, Diwali, not Denali, Diwali. I I thought about including Diwali as an alternate spelling, but I went with how Wikipedia spells it. I might get some angry letters about that. You don't know my email. If you want to send an angry letter, send it to Julie at myjewishlearning.com or tips at jta.org. Let's look at the leaderboard. Schlemiel's in first, Will in second, JT in third, Dukes in fourth, Handy's falling to fifth. Five players have reached an answer of four in a row. Because it's five of you, it doesn't tell me who you are. If that's you, you know who you are. You should feel great about yourself, even though you're not on the leaderboard. Okay, let's go. Question 18, let's go, let's look. After the upcoming election in March, how many elections will Israel have had in the last two years? How many? Is it gonna be three, five, four, or six? 
three, five, four, or six. There's the current prime minister, Benjamin Netanyahu. He looks like he's got something up his sleeve there. He usually has something up his sleeve. Let's see if he can sneak out another term. Three, four, five, or six. Three, four, five, or six. Which one is it? Which one is it? It is, Mazal Tov told you, following Israel politics closely, it is four in the last two years, which seems like a lot. Goy Vey! Goy Vey is back with an answer streak of three in a row. Goy Vey, I love the name. You're not on the leaderboard, but I wish you were, so I could be saying Goy Vey all night long. Shlomiel Stone first, Will in second, JT in third, Hanny for JB in fifth. JB, back on the leaderboard. Back on the leaderboard, JB, this is the last question. Which Jewish filmmaking duo originally had the idea for Bad Santa? Was it Carl Reiner and Mel Brooks, Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David, the Safdie brothers, or the Cohen brothers? All of those are decorated Jewish uh, filmmaking duos. Only one of them had the original idea and was involved in the creation of the very funny movie, Bad Santa. Who was it? Who was it? Mazalto, 58 of you who knew that it was the Cohen brothers. Now is the moment we find out who won that $50 gift certificate. Not to your third favorite J uh, Jewish store, not to your second favorite, but your first favorite. I can't wait to see. Is it Shlemiel? Could someone make a move on Shlemiel on the last question? That would be savage. Let's look at the podium. In third place, in third place with 10 out of 18, it was JTA. Way to go, JTA. In second place, Shlemiel was best in the end. Who's in first? Who's in first? Who is it? Who is it? Who's it going to be? It's Will. Congratulations, Will. If you're my brother-in-law, Will, congratulations. If you're not my brother-in-law, Will, congratulations. Either way, to collect your well-deserved prize, you ought to email Julie at myjewishlearning.com. This is You Call That News. Folks, if you like You Call That News and you want to bring us back on the air, you just flood tips at jta.org or julie at myjewishlearning.com saying, you got to bring back my Jewish mind, You Call That News. All right, until next time, I'm wishing all of you a very Merry Christmas. This is Rabbi Benjamin Resnick signing out.